We don't know when we're going back. We don't know, do we stick around here? And like, how do you make plans and to like what your life is going to look like? And you're just kind of just sitting around waiting. You don't really know what was going on. Like it's hard to get the right information and what is accurate information at this time. It's been over a week since thousands of Jasper residents and tourists were forced to evacuate the town. Days later, the wildfire swept through, destroying a third of the community. Crews have since extinguished all the flames within the town, but the blaze continues to burn nearby in Jasper National Park, and hot temperatures are in the forecast. There is no date set for residents to return home, but officials have laid out the criteria that must be met for that to happen. Joe Yuri is the owner of Jasper Tour Company. He joins us from Hinton, Alberta. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Hi, Brett. Thanks for having me. So where are you now and what's the weather looking like in the park? I am sitting directly outside the command center for the, uh, for the Jasper Wildfire Complex. Uh, Hinton's just about uh, 20 odd K from the actual boundary of the park. And myself, I have found myself a home about one kilometer from the park itself. So um, it's so strange that it took me 1200 kilometers to get where I am now from where we got evacuated to. And I'm now 50 K from home and I can't get there. How are you holding up? I'm good. Um, it, uh, I'm good. There's a lot of people that I'm concerned about. They're my friends, my family, my neighbors. Um, they're having a hard time with this. And the reality is that this is all still very, very surreal. It's not till they see the actual damage itself that I think it'll really sink home. We, we've just seen the same images that you've seen. And, and, and just like everybody else, it's still just something on television. So um, I think the worst is still to come for most people who've, who've suffered. It's a, it's a difficult situation to even fathom. I understand there was a town hall in Calgary yesterday. What did you hear from officials? What's the latest? Yeah, it was uh, uh, online as well. So anybody who had the ability to put ears on it could hear and also um, um, ask some questions. It sound there. There were some good things that came of it, just in terms of um, getting information out there. There's a lot of pertinent questions that people wanted to to ask or wanted answers to and hadn't been able to. There's a, we have a a, a a presence on social media. A, a lot of us have gathered together where we're trying to ask each other questions in the hopes that someone can get answers. And we did get some answers from the town hall on that. Um, there were some things that are still a little bit vague, and I, I think it's understandable because they're still trying to uh, put things uh, in order um, in terms of what fire command has to uh, have, like you suggested, the criterion before we can go home and stuff like this. So for some questions, there won't be answers for a while. Well, when you can return home does seem to still be one of those questions. How does it feel not knowing when you will be able to return? Uh, I think that's the biggest question for everybody, and that sort of feeling that you're in limbo is it's it, it adds to the surreal nature of the whole thing. Um, there was one question that I actually uh, asked. I asked probably ten, but they utilized one of mine, and it was simply. Um, where is a list that somebody could put their name on that when the moment is right, and we're not talking about right now, and we're not talking about um, getting. Um, civilians hands into something that's extremely dangerous and uh, due to toxic levels but just a simple list that people could put their name on that says when the time is right we can sweep streets we can muck off sidewalks if there was even simply a list like that exists that people could put their names onto right then and there they feel like they weren't sitting on their hands anymore and 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 that would be reassuring to them but we, we didn't get an answer for that joe i'm hoping you could take me back to last week on the day the evacuation order went out. What was it like for you at that time? Uh, well, I was actually present when the what they call the North Fire ignited at the transfer station. I was doing a tour with guests, international guests, and uh, that thing quickly es escalated. I, I, I had made an attempt to put it out myself, uh, and I managed to protect one power pole. Uh, but at that moment in time, fire had crept about 20 feet away and found some ladder fuel and ignited a tree. What but was going through your mind finished. when that was happening? Just to get the fire out. Like when I, when it first started, we, I was sitting in a vehicle with my guests looking for coyotes and the fire begins. And I think anybody would 
run down there like I did. And I was on the phone with dispatch at the exact same time, trying uh, to get some help out there. And initially, I just wanted that bonfire size fire. Uh, put out. But by the time they came there and I had contained the bonfire size around the actual power pole, it had then spread and uh, had gone up a tree and it was just that fast. Um, if anyone who has never experienced forest fire, and I worked fighting forest fires in 1985 for five months, um, this and, and conditions like we're experiencing right now, when a fire wants to travel, when a fire becomes its own weather maker, which this the South Fire certainly did, there's really nothing that you can do to stop a monster like that. So uh, very quickly, I went back into the vehicle and my guests were like, wow, like, oh, we've seen this on TV. And I told them very quickly, I, I think we've got to go back to town and you need to be prepared to leave. This isn't going to go well. And sure enough, two hours later, the order to evacuate came. Joe, this next question is a difficult one, but I also think it's an important one. How would you describe the loss that the community is grieving right now? It's, it's, it's beyond epic. I mean, at the moment, it's everything. It's everything until we can get home. I, I think we need to consider and we need to stress that 70% of the town is still staying. 70, and that 70% includes a great majority of the hotel rooms. It also includes a great majority of the, uh, 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 the restaurants and pubs and, uh, and gift shops and, and you name it. That's really important because we want to remind people that while 30% of our town is gone and those are largely the homes, we will be back and we'll be back shortly. And we just want people to remember that we're still here and, and to come and visit us. Uh, there's going to be a new narrative when they do. Um, but that's super, super important. Mm -hmm. um, a couple other things to note about something like this is that I don't want to be, I don't want our town to be a political football for the federal government and the provincial government to kick around and point fingers at each other with. And I also don't want to become yesterday's news uh, because as we know, people will move on from a, a crisis like this the second a new crisis begins. And then the support to rebuild our town will become that much more difficult to get. So what does your community need to prevent that from happening? Whether it be we from all eyes on. Go ahead. Whether it be from the federal government, the provincial government or anyone else, what would most assist you right now? Well, right now, what would most assist everybody is just some answers, continued roofs over our heads, foods in our mouths, uh, the idea that we all know that our children can uh, can register and go to school, at least, if not in Jasper, somewhere close by, uh, or, or Zoom, um, and then that we have their 100% support on a rebuild that includes uh, federal uh, mines and money, provincial mines and money, municipal mines and money, indigenous mines and money, because these are people who were chased out of this place by another fire called Canada a long time ago. They need to be back on the landscape. The managers who will control situations like this can utilize some of the knowledge that they used to uh, uh, use within these uh, the boundaries of what's now Jasper National Park. So we need everybody to be on the exact same page when the time to rebuild comes about. And um, hopefully, uh, you know, of course we're gonna mm -hmm. make mistakes. We all, that's human nature but at least we can mitigate some of the mistakes that we Absolutely. made in the past if we're all still on the same page. All right, Joe Yuri is the owner of Jasper Tour Company. I wanna thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me and uh, stay strong, Jasper. Time now to get to the federal government's response to the wildfire threat in Jasper National Park. Adam Vancouverden is the parliamentary secretary to the federal minister of environment and climate change. And he joins me now. Hello and welcome to Power in Politics. Thanks, Brett. Nice to be here. So residents of Jasper have been forced out of their homes for a week. Now that the fire is out in the town site, what can you tell me about the plans for their re-entry? Uh, well, thank you. And first, I just want to acknowledge how to, what a difficult time this has been for all the residents of Jasper. And I want to take this opportunity to thank first responders and firefighters, all Parks Canada staff, I'd like to thank Wildfires Alberta, uh, the town of Jasper and Mayor uh, Ireland for being extraordinary leaders through this time. Uh, it's been extraordinarily difficult. Uh, we are gonna do a staged safe re-entry of the town now that all of the fires are out in the town. 
Uh, there continues to be over 400 crew on the ground. Uh, and those are all firefighters from Ontario, from Alberta, from Parks Canada, from British Columbia. And I just want to thank them all for their extraordinary work. Um, all of the evacuation plans that were put in place years ago, all of the buffer zones that were created, all of the prep and all of the mitigation efforts um, means that, you know, this natural disaster did not result in any injuries or loss of life. And that's the main thing, uh, Brett, is that people, um, you know, we can rebuild a town, we can rebuild our homes, um, but people were, were not harmed in this fire, which is nothing short of a miracle, and all thanks to the, the extraordinary efforts of first responders and people doing that planning. Well, you mentioned the phased re-entry. You didn't mention anything about the timeline. Is Can you tell me anything about the timeline? Well, it, first and foremost, it needs to be safe. You know, when there's a fire, there's a lot of sort of chemicals and things that uh, that burn and we need to make sure that everything is safe. So I don't want to give any timelines because I haven't heard of any personally, um, but uh, it's an ASAP and as soon as possible, only when as safe as possible. And, uh, you know, I think everybody recognizes how important it is to make sure that we do that phased re-entry so that people remain uh, safe and secure. Well, in, in the meantime, uh, as, as you can imagine, people still have questions. Uh, what other support uh, is the government providing to some of these evacuees who are currently in limbo? Yeah, thank you. There are uh, a lot of supports available through both the provincial and the federal government. Uh, Canada is matching uh, all donations to the Red Cross for those who are accessing those services. Uh, the town of Jasper has been absolutely phenomenal. I just want to again acknowledge uh, what a great leader Mayor Ireland has been. Um, and, you know, the collaboration really couldn't have been any stronger between the, the province, the Government of Canada, Parks Canada, Wildfires, Alberta, the town of Jasper. And, uh, you know, there probably isn't a, a more fire safe town or community than Jasper. The Fire Smart program was actually started in Jasper. Um, so I think the residents, you know, are actually far more, um, <laughs> they're experts in this because they've all been briefed. They've all been, um, been educated and that public awareness program uh, from everything from like what to pack, how to be uh, prepared for emergencies, um, what the evacuation plans were, what the routes were, those were all done in advance. And that's why the town of Jasper was able to evacuate in just five hours. So unfortunately the re-entry will take longer than five hours, but Jasperites are well aware of the risks involved in going back into too early. Um, so our thoughts are with them, but also the federal government's supports are with them. And there's a lot of information online. And to Canadians from coast to coast to coast who would like to help out a little bit, the federal government is matching donations to the Canadian Red Cross at this time. Well, you, you referenced Mayor of Jasper, Richard Ireland's comments about the town's preparedness. I want to ask you about the park's preparedness. How confident are you that the park was as prepared as it could have been for this fire? Well, I'm 100% confident that Parks Canada staff did an extraordinary job, and so is Mayor Ireland. He stated that both the uh, Parks Canada staff and the town were were prepared, uh, and they couldn't have been more prepared. And the collaboration between all levels of government and all institutions like Parks Canada could not have been any stronger. Um, so I thank the the Mayor of Jasper for for that comment, but also for the extraordinary work that went into ensuring that that is true. Um, you know, it really was a result of the extraordinary intensity of this blaze weeks of extreme heat and strong winds that resulted in an unprecedented fire. Um, but it was all the mitigation efforts, all of the public awareness, all of that education, all of those buffer zones and the thinning of that forest that resulted in a fire that didn't have an impact on human life and safety. Um, you know, this is a, a real tragedy. Jasper's a beautiful town, um, but Parks Canada staff were also fighting these fires where, while their own homes were burning. So, you know, everybody that contributed in any big or small way is a hero. I want to thank them for all of that extraordinary effort and work. Um, you know, houses and communities can be rebuilt. And the, the government was warned, though. This is from the 2022 Jasper Parks Management Plan. It says, quote, a mountain pine beetle infestation has brought significant change to forests in Alberta, including Jasper National Park, with consequences for wildfire risk, public safety, infrastructure management, and long-term forest succession. Some critics have cited this passage to suggest more could have been done to reduce fire hazards in that area. What do you say to those critics? Well, there's been a lot of uh, criticism and also a lot of misinformation about, you know, how wildfires are being started and why, why they're um, stronger and worse than they've ever been. 
I don't think it's a coincidence that the hottest day ever on record on planet Earth was the same day that the Jasper Wild. That, that may be true, that's but I'm asking that. about the park management plan, which identified this risk. Yeah, the park management plan with respect to pine beetles was well in advance, and a lot of things changed at that time. The park manage, uh, management plan did change as a result of the uh, the pine beetle infestation, and that's why the thinning of the forest and all of those buffer zones, new evacuation routes, and stronger mitigation efforts were all undertaken. And it's these efforts that resulted. And, and I want to say that that wasn't just a Parks Canada effort. Uh, the Wildfires Alberta effort. The, I want to thank the, the Premier of Alberta for, for acknowledging that the collaboration between all levels of governments and agencies could not have been any stronger. Um, I want to thank the Incident Command Centre at, at Parks Canada, because all of those preparations, that those warnings that you referenced, uh, resulted in a lot of changes. That resulted in a lot of like modifications, increased funding, increased awareness efforts, increased science, increased measurements. All of those things were undertaken to ensure uh, that fires like this can be mitigated. Sometimes they can't be stopped. You know, the fire was moving at 15 meters per minute. There was a over 100 meter high crown on some of these wildfires. And unfortunately, that means that a lot of the water bombers were completely ineffective. Uh, the speed at which this fire uh, propagated and the intensity at which it burned meant that a lot of traditional firefighting techniques and methods were not effective. So, um, but what were effective is all of the efforts to ensure that people remain safe. And, just just to be clear. Happened. So acknowledging that and acknowledging also that 70% of Jasper was saved from this wildfire um, is, you know, something to, to acknowledge, perhaps not celebrate this early, but it is important to recognize that those efforts and those warnings were heeded and that information was well used. And that's the importance, underscores the importance of doing good ecological science, good conservation and, and really, really good um, you know, preparation efforts and mitigation efforts were undertaken. Just to be clear, in your view, everything that could have been done in response to these warnings was done to mitigate the fire. That's yeah. your position? Absolutely, Brett. And, and I want to underscore again that this was a real tragedy, but we're talking about property damage here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really an emotional time for anybody who's ever visited Jasper. You know how beautiful and unique this place is. Um, but absolutely every request that was made of the federal and the provincial government was met. Uh, everything that could have been done to mitigate this fire has been done. And we need to do more. You know, we certainly need to do more because these fires are burning hotter, more frequently and longer. Uh, we even saw, you know, embers uh, under, under, I saw reports of embers under snow all winter in some places. This is really unprecedented, you know. We're in an era now of, of uh, really difficult to deal with extreme weather events uh, that are having a greater impact on our livelihoods, our economies, and our, our very lives. Um, so we need to do more, not just to protect our, our communities and our, our community members from safety, but we've got a lot to learn about how fires are, or sorry, how forests are reacting to the changing climate that we're all experiencing. All right, we have to leave it there. That is Adam Vancouverden, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Brett.